Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to spend 15, 20 minutes or so uh, just um, going through uh, the Unity product that I highlighted yesterday in one of my talks. Um, I have it sitting here, it's been sitting here quite patiently behind me. Um, so bear with me, just put my mouse down. Um, so yeah, uh, anyone that was around um, at the end of the last session, I gave a really brief overview of Unity and I gave a talk about it yesterday. If anyone wants any one-on-one uh, -on -one demonstrations, then please feel free to contact us and we can do a demonstration for your group or you can send us samples and we can um, put them onto Unity and see how it will perform for you. Um, so do let us know if you want a more detailed demo or want to know any more about it. Um, and feel free to ask questions in the chat room. Um, I know Remus is online and so is Lee, so they can help with answering any questions that you have as we go along. Um, so maybe Remus can help me by finding me another sample holder to show people. Um, so as I say, um, Unity is an all-in-one bench top confocal. So everything is inside here, including the, um, the computer, the light source, the camera, the screen disconfocal, etc. There's nothing hidden underneath the table. There's no big box. Um, I think uh, some of you may have seen the uh, nano imager from ONI, and uh, it's a tiny, tiny instrument, but has a big light source attached to it. Um, so there's no, no hidden boxes. Um, attached to the system at all. Um, so the front of the unity in here, this is the, um, the sample stage and um, this is where the sample will go in and we have a, a range of sample holders a little bit like this. So we have the petri dish holder, um, we have a multi-world plate holder um, and at the moment I've got the, the two slide holder inserted. Um, and these are um, Inserted into the XY stage and located by just a couple of magnets on the, on the system. So they're just held gently in place. Um, the stage itself is resting on a glass platform. So um, our XY stage fits on like so and just moves the sample holder around like a hockey puck on, on ice. Um, this means that our XY stage doesn't have to be as bulky as uh, your normal microscope stage that you might find on your normal inverted microscope. Um, it's very small, it doesn't output much heat or power, um, it just needs to move this sample holder around. Um, so as I said at the moment, I've got the, the two slide holder in there. Um, this um, closes up to make the system light tight, so you don't need this system to be in a dark room. As you see, it's just in our normal office with the lights on on a normal table. Um, there is inbuilt dampening um, inside here between the instrument um, and the stage. So you don't need to uh, uh, put your instrument on an optical table or anything like that. It can sit on your lab bench or on your office desk um, and it, it'll be quite happy. So there's a lot of vibration dampening um, inside. Um, so once the sample's in, um, we can choose uh, which sample holder we have. As I said, the um, uh, display here and the live image is not very good so I will switch over to a recording in a little while and I'll talk you through the graphical user interface in a little bit more detail um, but just to show you um, it working live for now. Um, so we can choose our sample holder just by clicking through so the, the petri dish holder, the 96 world plate holder or the, or the slide holder. Um, in theory, we can make different holders for different applications. So if you have a microfluidic chip or something like that that you need to integrate into the system, then just talk to us and we can, we can produce something to fit the system. Um, and the idea is that there'll be lots of different options for you. Um, down, down here, again, this is why I'm gonna zoom in a little while, and um, we can choose the objective that we have installed in the system. Um, so once we're, we've um, chosen our um, sample holder, um, sorry, I should have shown that in a little bit more detail. I'm just gonna move to where I think my sample is on the slide, and then it will automatically open up into the overview. So this is the overview mode, and we have um, just a mouse kidney section on here. Um, so this um, view is looking from the top of the instrument. So this is this electro-optical lens. 
Um, so in, as we have no eyepieces on the system, we need to be able to look at our sample. Um, so that's what this lens is for. Um, and as you can see, if I just turn on the blue as well, we can get a three color image um, of our sample. <laughs> the DAPI is a little bit diffuse in this sample, so let's just switch it off for the moment. Um, so this gives us a four millimeter by four millimeter field of view. Um, and we can focus it just by the control on the left hand side here. So we can move it up and down in our sample. Um, so this, this view is for finding your cells, navigating around and finding a suitable field of view that you want to study. Um, so I can navigate around and then try and find a nice, a nice uh, spot. So one thing you can't see is that there's a little target in the middle which shows you the field of view of your objective lens. Um, and again, when I zoom in, you'll be able to see that in more detail. Um, so now um, the controls that we have are pinching and um, uh, spreading your fingers on the screen to go between the modes. So I can pinch in to go to the overview mode or I can pinch out to go to the objective lens. So this is now looking from the bottom of our sample. And as you can see, I'm just using my finger to drag the XY stage into the correct position um, for where I want to see. Um, so this view is the wide field view. Um, I'll just turn on the DAPI um, so you can see. So again, the view online is not so good. Um, but this is the wide field view. So this is um, one of the detectors inside Unity, the image from that. Um, so the detector is located right at the back of the instrument at the bottom inside. Um, and we have two 2K by 2K uh, scientific CMOS sensors. Um, that are perfectly synchronized together. So we're doing our transmitted light and our reflected light, one on each sensor. Um, when we want to go, um, <laughs> um, yes, we did, but it dried out. I wanted to do the zebrafish embryo uh, on this demonstration, but unfortunately it dried out and we have no way of accessing fresh samples at the moment, unfortunately. So fix sample today. Um, so when we want to go from our wide field um, image to our confocal image, we need to um, subtract our reflected image from our transmitted image. Um, so we can do that, as I say, everything's um, live um, and on the fly, so we can go into a sectioned image really, really quickly. Um, and again, we have full control of moving in Z, so it's just like a normal um, confocal microscope where we're seeing um, our sectioned image. So I'm just going up through the sample here. Okay, um, so this, this um, touchscreen interface is really, really, really um, uh, easy to use. We have the, the Z control on the left. Um, we can either use our wide field image or our confocal image. Um, we can choose our sectioning um, strength here, so um, how fine we want to slice in Z. Um, on the right hand side we have our channels, so I can just visualize maybe one channel or two channels or three channels. And this is also where I change the exposure type, but as I say, it doesn't really show up um, so easily here. Um, and then when we're ready to acquire, we just swipe le left on the, oh, on the acquire button at the top um, and that will acquire our Z stack or our tile scan or whatever. Um, uh, yes, Mika, um, what I'm going to do though, I'm going to switch into a video and I'll talk you through that so if you can see the graphical user interface up close. Um, I mean, I can set it going quickly now so people can see a, a live one, um, but then I'll switch over to the video. So all I do is I navigate to the top, just like a normal confocal, I set my top and then navigate to the bottom somewhere, set bottom, and then I can just swipe and click acquire and it will go off and take our z-stack and it's um really 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 quick so it's taking um three color z-stack in a few seconds okay and then when you're ready to go and um, you just go back into your overview mode choose a new region of interest and then carry on okay um just as an aside the data is all um, being collected as an only tiff file so you can read it into your favorite packages so uh 
Fiji or whatever you want to use. Um, so it's extremely flexible in the same way that the Clarity system is flexible. We want to be compatible with all the open source software packages or your commercial packages that you want to use. Um, so it's very, very easy. Um, so just to get you a little bit closer up to the, to the app, um, I'm going to try and share my screen. Um, and then it should have, hopefully, no, my video is not running. Let me just get that running. Application window, video. So this was literally just recorded um, a couple of days ago when we were playing around. Um, let me just do it again. Uh, no, okay, let me try again. And with problems again. Oh no, it's just, it doesn't want to play my video. <laughs> okay. Two seconds. It's funny, like normally live demos are less reliable than actually a, a canned demo. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. So this is a close up of the graphical user interface. Um, so I'm just going to um, play through. So this is um, going through the different um, sample um, holders. So we have the slides and the Petri dish. Um, and when I navigate to a region of interest where my sample is, it will automatically go into the overview mode. You can toggle back and forth between the sample holder and the overview mode uh, as long as you want to. Um, this is really handy if you're in the 96 well plate, for example, and you want to go to a certain well. So we can um, go up and down in Z to focus um, in our overview mode, and we can move the stage just by dragging with my finger, um, like I showed you before. Um, so I've just um, highlighted a, a, an area of interest there. Um, okay. So, yeah. Um, and then you can change the exposure times in your overview mode as well. Um, so you can uh, reduce, reduce or increase your exposure time. And you'll notice that the exposure time on the right, um, we're changing the exposure time and the lamp intensity. And you can see that we're running this LED lamp at 3%, 5%. The light efficiency in this system is excellent. Um, so I've gone to the objective, um, I've gone to a region of interest, and then turned on confocal mode. Uh, there's a little bit of compression and a little bit of silliness going on in the video, but um, I hope you get the gist of it. Um, so again, we can change the, the exposure times and the lamp intensity for each channel. Um, and then we can change the sectioning. So we can either undersample or oversample. So if you want to um, oversample to do some deconvolution or something later, that's fine. Um, and all these sliders where I'm adjusting things, there is a little indication. Um, so when it's um, in the middle and fully colored in, you're at the optimal position. So this, this sectioning um, would give you nicer sampling. But if you wanted to go a little bit lower or a little bit higher, you have freedom to do that. Um, as I showed before, you can do one, two or three channels. It's set up for Dappy Fitzy Tritty as standard. Um, and then we can um, focus through our sample. So here I'm going to go up to the top of the, of the sample just to set up our Z stack. So this is, this is what I did very quickly before. Um, so I've set the top and then I navigate down to the bottom. Um, so I'm navigating down by just dragging my thumb down on the on the Z control, and then I click at the bottom to set the Z range. So now we've set our Z range, and I've gone back to the middle of the stack, and we're ready to um, acquire some data. It's still playing. Yeah, it's still playing. Oh, I know what I did yesterday. Um, I forgot to set the tile scan, so I wanted to show you a tile scan as well. 
Um, so we can do that if you put, put your finger onto the screen and hold it for a second or two. Then you can drag a region of interest around where you want to collect your data. So that's just set up a nine by nine tile scan. Okay. Um, so then we turn all our channels back on. And then when we're ready to acquire, we just swipe left where it says acquire. And that will go ahead and do our uh, three by three uh, tile scan. Oh, and give it a name as well. Okay, and then hopefully you'll see the little yellow chevrons at the top on the right move. And that's just me swiping with my finger across the screen. And then you'll see how, how quickly uh, this system acquires data. So what we're doing, we're strobing the LED light source um, really fast, um, blue, green, red, blue, green, red, blue, green, red, um, while we're moving the Z drive. And it just means that we can capture data in a really, really fast and efficient way. Um, and so you can really do these big, big Z stacks or big tile scans uh, very, very quickly. So it's really well set up for um, capturing lots of data very quickly, sort of screening exercises um, or big areas of tissue or screening lots and lots of cells. So it's going to be great for statistical work and giving you lots of, lots of data. Okay. So that's a, a, a real brief run through of how to do a, a Z set stack and a tile scan in, in Unity. Um, on the bottom right of the uh, graphical user interface, there's also a time lapse. Um, so we can uh, set a, a time interval and a time scale um, to do your time lapse imaging as well. So it really does everything that you would want your traditional spinning disk confocal to do um, with a very similar resolution to a traditional. Um, laser-based confocal, um, but in a much, much more compact and easy to use um, format. So here I've just come out again, back into the overview mode to find a new region of interest, and, and then we can go again. So you can see how quickly you can, you can get your data going. Okay. And I think this video goes on for, for some time. Okay, so I hope that... Um, that gives you a, a little bit of a, a, a flavor of where we are right now. Um, so uh, I believe Remus has been asking, uh, answering some questions in the background, but feel free to keep the questions coming in and we'll, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, just to say that this is a very, very new instrument. Um, it's very new on the market. So we're adding new features every day. Um, so this graphical user interface is, is evolving um, very quickly. Um, an interesting comment from uh, Aridas. Um, can you save and reuse imaging configuration? Um, yeah, so um, we can save things. Um, or not, but I must say it's so easy to set up that you probably won't need to save and reuse your imaging um, protocol because it's so easy to just start again. Um, but but yeah, of course we can we can try and save those those uh, files for you and you can read them back in. Um, right, what else do we have? Oh, thank you very much, Sven, for a nice comment. Um, can't wait to uh, do some demonstrations with you in Sweden. Um, so, can we also fill the immersion medium to support longer travel range in multi world plate format? Um, Remus, I know you've been looking at this sort of solution, so um, can you maybe uh, type a comment in for that? Um, so, one thing with immersion is that um, in this aperture in the top, there is very little um, space for you to go in and uh, clean your objective. So um, that's quite a common question. Um, you can fully remove the objective if you want to deep clean your objective if you're using immersion media. Um, also, the top is removable. So you can use this as a completely open inverted microscope if you want to, and you want to have access to be able to clean immersion media from your, from your objective. Um, now, uh, Remus has been, Looking at this, obviously, uh, he's a product designer, um, and we've, we've looked at this uh, situation in some detail with how we can 
auto dose either oil or water onto your objective in a in a safe um, and reproducible way. Um, so maybe we can update you about that later on and just can comment on, on that. Um, and just a, a note about the objectives. Um, so when we supply Unity to you, it will come pre-configured with one objective. So we would discuss with you about your application, whether you're needing an immersion uh, lens or whether you want, say, a low magnification dry lens for much bigger samples, clear tissue and things like this. Um, so you choose that at the beginning um, and it's not something that you would routinely change. Um, saying that, if your experiments change um, sometime afterwards, then the, in, the objective can be completely removed and changed. Um, so uh, at the moment, the objective brands are Nikon, um, just a, a historical relationship we had with Nikon when we were developing the product. Um, they, they do have a great range of objectives. Um, and uh, we, as we say, we've tried 10X, 0.4 NA dry lenses, and we've got a 63 um, oil in here at the moment. We've tried 20 water. So there's, there's lots of different um, configurations you could try. Um, depending on your application. Um, is autofocusing possible? It, yes, it is possible, but we haven't implemented it yet. Um, so that's one feature that we're, we're looking to come in in a later version at the moment. <clears throat> so um, not at the moment. Um, uh, just one private comment, um, incubation. Um, so a lot of people um, have asked about uh, live cell imaging, because obviously this instrument is perfect for live cell imaging. Um, so this whole um, top area is already geared up for um, live cell imaging, um, and we're working on the incubation option now. We already have ports in the rear to attach CO2. Um, we've been talking a lot about um, uh, ports to input microfluidics, and things like that. So all of this will come um, over the coming months. Um, we've been somewhat delayed in our R&D with the last uh, month or two. Um, so hopefully uh, later in the year we'll have, we'll have things like that coming out in the next version. Um, what do we have? Uh, how do you manage shading with your tile imaging? Okay, um, so Lydia, this is a, an interesting question. Um, the, the shading that you get in tile scans is, is really due to any um, differences in illumination that you have in your system. Um, it could be due to your objective, your light source, and things like this, where you get this roll off at the edge of the images. Um, now, we're really lucky in Unity that, um, yeah, Aravidice, yeah, tiling mode is available. Yeah, that's, that's um, definitely in there. Um, now, with Unity, we've had full control over designing the whole optical system. Um, and so we've made sure that everything is very flat. The illumination is very flat um, and, and the cameras are very well set up. The whole optical path is really optimized. Um, so we've found in the tile scans, actually, it's really, really, really flat, the image. You get a little, little tiny bit, as with all tile scans. Um, but I've been really, really impressed with what I've seen so far. Um, we did have a zebrafish um, on the system last week, and we did a tile scan on, on that. And um, the, the um, borders between the tiles were essentially um, uh, not visible. Um, so, yeah, the tiling mode, um, as I say in here, if I just show you, if I just touch on the screen, and then I just drag a region of interest, and then that sets up your tile scan. Um, and then it's, it's, it's shown here. So I can just either turn it off if I don't want a tile scan or turn it on if I do want a tile scan. So that's already in the, in the system. Um, yeah, I don't understand the second part of your question either, Um what's, what's the large limit of the largest pixel size of the image? Um, oh, the maximum number of tiles. Um, Remus, is it the whole screen? 386? It's 386 tiles. Um, so, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so, basically, it will do quite a big. 
a big tile scan if you wanted to. So that's 224, it's nearly the whole, the whole field of view. So that's a four millimeter by four millimeter tile, which I think is gonna cover most, most samples, I think. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh, another private question. Um, Time-lapse, yeah, is that available? Yeah, so this is just located on the right-hand side. I should have um, put that in a video. Um, what we have, um, if I just put my finger over and explain what I'm doing, um, here I open up the time interval. So at the moment it says on there 10 seconds, and I can move that up or down to change the time interval. Um, then if I release it, and click on it again, it will give you the duration. So then you can make that two hours or whatever you want. Um, it's just by moving up and down again. Um, but maybe I can take a video of this and release it to the, um, the audience at a later time um, to show that in more detail. I don't think I took a video of it. Um, but yeah, so you can set up your um, time-lapse um, uh, um, interval between your data sets and your duration of your experiment. Um, very, very easily in the minute. So you can do a Z stack with tile scan and time lapse in the in the same experiment. Um, uh, one thing you have to work be careful of if you're doing these big experiments, because it's so easy to set up a huge tile scan with a long time lapse. Um, just be careful of the size of your data set. Um, I was getting a little bit enthusiastic last week trying to stretch the system, and my laptop just could not open the data set that I produced. Um, so it's, we've got plenty of storage in here, but just make sure that your computing power to open and process the data is, is good enough um, because these TIFF files can get quite sizable. Um, obviously the tiles are different um, TIFFs, but um, you know you, you can get pretty big data if you do huge set stacks and things like that. Um, uh, oh yeah, another private question. Um, so in my talk, I think I said about the rear of the instrument. Um, so we have various ways of getting your data off the instrument. Um, so we can either just um, collect, um, collect the data onto the integrated hard drive, and then you can remove the data via a portable hard drive, or you can network the instrument, or you can even do it over Wi-Fi, although that's a little bit slow. Um, or you can um, attach a hard drive to the back and have the instrument just automatically saving to the hard drive, or you can automatically save it to a network. So it's very, very flexible in the way that you can um, use the instrument. Um, there's quite a lot of hard drive storage on there, um, so you, you should be okay to do quite a long run of instruments before you need to remove your data. Um, right, uh, is deconvolution built into the software? Um, watch this space. Um, not yet. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to do something about that later. Um, from Ritu, um, does the iPad need to be near the system or could I take it home to observe the overnight running remotely? Um, the iPad itself does need to be near the system, but what it's doing is it's basically logging into an IP address of the instrument. So in theory, you could leave the iPad in the lab and then go home and log into the IP address of Unity, and then you could look at um, your, your instrument from home. So you can remotely control it um, from, from a computer. Um, but, but yeah, the iPad itself will have to be close to Unity to, to be in range. I believe there is a way to um, use a lab Wi-Fi connection, but I haven't used that yet. So maybe uh, Remus can comment on that if he's, if he's got time. Um, so, uh, yes, good point, Mika, um, the, the LED, we, we've had lots of talks about um, sample preservation and uh, reducing bleaching and things like this. Um, so what we do um, with Unity, I'll just turn off the task again. Um, what we do with Unity, the light is not on all the time. So this image is a recorded image and we only turn on the lights when I move something. So when I move the XY stage, um, or when I move the Z drive, then um, the lights will strobe and take one, one image. So this is um, just uh, looking after your sample. So this kidney sample now is getting pretty old, um, and we've been imaging with it an awful lot. 
Um, and we really haven't seen much bleaching um, using Unity, so it's hard to talk and do these things at the same time, especially back to front and left-handed. Um, yeah, so uh, schematics. Uh, yeah, the file format of the data set. Um, make, uh, Remus, can you comment on that for me while I answer some of the other questions? Um, da, da, da. Any other questions that I've missed? Maybe Lee, you can help me out a little bit. Um, so for prices, um, I think Lee mentioned in a previous talk, um, we've got a range of uh, distributors in different countries um, that will be happy to uh, uh, let you have a quotation. Um, so uh, if you can let me know uh, which country you're based in, uh, then we can put you in touch with the uh, relevant uh, agent and they'll be able to help you out with a, with a quotation and prices for different options. Um, just to say, um, it's not four colour, it's three colour. Um, at the moment. Um, so it's just Daphne, Fitzy and Trixie in, in, in this model. Uh, you're in France. Okay. Um, so your uh, local contact would be Marie-Georges Comet. She's from a company called Image Excel. Um, so she's, she's a very knowledgeable lady. Um, she used to work for Leica. Um, uh, she's a metamorph distributor and, and looks after our systems in France. Um, so yeah, um, if you if you look up uh, Image Excel, um, then then you'd be able to contact her, or maybe we can put you in contact directly. Um, if we do forget, then send us an email, and, and then we will uh, uh, put you in touch. Um, right. What else do we have? Da, da, da. Scrolling back. Okay, so Bojul Chang. Um, do we have a rough idea of the photo bleaching compared with the confocal microscope? Um, it, so photo bleaching is really a uh, difficult thing to quantify uh, between different microscopes. Um, so we know that, for example, this system with the LEDs only turning on when you move something. So it's literally taking a snapshot and then turning the LED off. Um, we know that this um, really does not photo bleach your sample very much at all, um, especially when you're in this sort of navigation mode and setting up your experiment. It's very, very gentle on your sample. Um, and during imaging, as you saw, we can have the um, light intensities really, really low. In that video, there were like three or five percent intensity, so really, really very gentle. Um, so this instrument is going to be extremely gentle on your sample. Um, the clarity system, um, we don't have this functionality of switching the LED off, um, so there's a little bit more bleaching. Um, if you compare this type of system with, a, a, say, a laser scanning confocal that are quite different, um, then it's very sample dependent. In general, the spinning disk systems, be it this one or uh, Yokogawa or something like that, uh, tend to be much gentler, much, much gentler. Um, but there is the odd sample in the mix that prefers being scanned at higher power. Um, and sometimes you can only tell when you try it out. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, spinning disc is a little bit more gentle than laser scanning confocal, and then the LED-based spinning disc is a little bit more gentle than a laser-based spinning disc. Um, but that's kind of a generalization. Um, it can be sample dependent. Um, so, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, good point, Mika. Um, we're hoping, obviously, this is a very new instrument, and this is the first version we've released. Um, we, uh, at the moment, it's three colours, room temperature, um, and then the next version is going to have environmental control, more channels, more functionality, and things like this. Um, so uh, just keep watching this space, and as I say, this is a very rapidly evolving product at the moment. Um, it's, uh, it's a very exciting time for us, it's, it, it, especially the graphic user interface and the functionality. Um, we're hoping that, um, that, that there are people, obviously, that are very interested in the live cell imaging part of the system, the environmental control and things like this, and more channels. 
Um, so we are very interested to work with people who'd be happy to take delivery of this model um, to see how it works and help us develop it and give us direction um, as to the live cell imaging um, functionality that needs to be there. And then there will be an upgrade route for those users um, to be able to upgrade from this first version to the fully functional live cell imaging version. So again, if you do want to discuss that sort of thing with us, just contact us and we can we can look at your samples, your experiment, and we can see what's needed. And, and we can let you know what functions and features are going to uh, come and when. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mika, for answering some questions there. That's really good. Um, yeah, so if anyone wants to contact the distributors or us directly about um, quotations or um, organising demonstrations and things like that, then um, uh, please uh, follow the link that uh, Mika has just put up. Um, so that would be great. Um, yeah, so of course this, this system, if you've got fixed specimens or uh, specimens that uh, don't particularly need to be held at 37 degrees, um, we can pump CO2 into there, so that's fine. Um, and if you're happy with three colours, then it's ready to go. Um, and we're more than happy to um, do remote demonstrations at the moment um, to you and your lab um, while this COVID-19 crisis is happening. Um, feel free to send us samples if you want us to take a look um, and send you some data. We're more than happy to do that and we can run a demonstration a bit like this to show you in more detail on more relevant samples for you because I understand not everybody's looking at fixed tissue specimens. Um, so uh, are there any other questions? Uh, any other points, Remus or Lee, that um, I haven't spoken about so far? No. Um, okay, well, as I say, uh, feel free to contact us if you're interested in a, a more uh, detailed demonstration for your laboratory or your group. Um, we'll be happy to organize these over the coming weeks and months, depending on how long we're all locked in our offices. Um, so we'll, we'll wind up the conference there. Thank you very much to, um, I think we have 62 people still still watching. Thank you so much for um, hanging around, especially with the problems earlier. We really, really, really appreciate you joining us. And uh, yeah, we've had great fun organizing this, although it was a little bit stressful at times. So um, thank you very much. Uh, have a good evening or a good morning, wherever you are. And I hope to see you um, maybe by email um, uh, over the coming days and weeks. Thank you very much.